Recently, we became certified in reverse mortgage, and there are a lot of myths regarding reverse mortgage out there that you really need to know about. So today, I wanted to touch a bit on what a reverse mortgage is and give you a short overview. Now, if a homeowner is 62 or older and wants money to pay off their mortgage, supplement their income, or pay for healthcare expenses, they may consider a reverse mortgage. If they get a reverse mortgage of any kind, it's a loan which they borrow against the equity in their home. They keep the title to the home. Instead of paying monthly mortgage payments though, they get an advance on part of the home equity. The money is usually not taxable and it generally won't affect their social security or Medicare benefits. When the last surviving borrower dies, sells the home or no longer lives in the home as a principal residence, the loan has to be repaid. In certain situations, a non-borrowing spouse may be able to remain in the home. Little known is the reverse mortgage for purchase rather than refi. If you have a client that meets the requirements, they can use a reverse mortgage to purchase their new home or resale home. The Home Equity Conversion Mortgage, or HECM, for purchase was created by Congress four years ago to streamline home buying transactions and cut costs. Before seniors would buy a new home, incurring closing costs and then taking out a reverse mortgage on the new home, triggering new closing costs now they can do it all in one. The Heckam for Purchase rolls this into one transaction and one set of closing costs. There's a new academic research that demonstrate how Heckams can play a vital role in retirement planning, not just a tool of last resort, but as a strategic way to provide greater financial flexibility to seniors with ample savings. Clients who need a comprehensive retirement plan can unlock their home equity and use it with a reverse mortgage. Now, for minding your own business. Hey, let's talk about the top SEO practices for blogging. Even the best blogs could go unnoticed if they aren't written with an SEO search engine optimization in mind. Here's four of the top practices. Number one, title. Google displays the first 60 characters of your title page, so make sure it's catchy yet concise. Number two, keywords. Never go through your content and attempt to stuff in keywords. It doesn't work. It's terrible. They should appear naturally to help the search engine tools know where your content is, what it's about, and how it should be indexed. Number three, images. Images should be representative of your topic, colorful, and be named specific for SEO with dashes in between each word, such as Sacramento-Land-Park-Zoo. Once you have the basics, it's really pretty simple. Number four, categories. Creating categories helps your readers navigate your blog page, so search engines find this to be very positive. There are more ways to make your blog more searchable, so give us a call or email if you want more information. We'd be happy to help. That's it for this week's edition of the Real Estate Insider Weekly. Thank you for joining me again, and have a great day.